return of the Lord is imminent. He can come any day, any hour. Nobody knows the day. And nobody knows the hour. Of the times and seasons, we're not ignorant. Yes, we're living in the end times. But what day it will be, what month it will be, what hour it will be, nobody knows. If the tribulation is known, and it is, it begins when Antichrist signs his peace treaty with the Jews. If the rapture is mid-trip or post-trip, we know when Jesus is coming. Dear friends, the rapture has to be pre-tribulation. Furthermore, people have a wrong concept. The, the tribulation period is the period of the wrath of God that is displayed on earth to a Christ-rejecting hedonistic age that is unlike the Greco-Roman age at the time of Christ. At the time when Christ was born the first time, they, there had been no church, there had been no preaching to the Gentiles, it was all new. But at the end time, the world will have all its knowledge, it would have had the church, it would have had its preaching, but it's rejected it. And the only thing left is the wrath of God. And the wrath of God and God's indignation comes on a world scale in many, many judgments that are seen in the book of Revelations. But the church is not appointed to wrath, but to obtain salvation through Jesus Christ. The church is the bride of Christ. The scriptures say this. God has not appointed us to wrath. He's not appointed us to the day of wrath. When you see the whole story, you will understand that the rapture must of necessity, if only because of the doctrine of imminency, be pre-tribulation. So these are the, <clears throat> the sort of the guiding ABCs that we have to look at. When we look at prophecy, Israel, the coming of the Lord, times of the Gentiles and everything else. Once we get our ABCs right, we can start to, having the broad canvas, we can start to look at the details. And I want to look at some very interesting details now. If we have time, Jerry, do we have time? Would you turn me into the book of Daniel? When you go to Bible school and when you read the commentaries, they interpret the book of Daniel mostly right. You know the story that Nebuchadnezzar had a dream that he couldn't even remember. Nobody could interpret it for him because he couldn't tell them what the dream was. He actually dreamed of a great metal man, head and shoulders of gold, arms and chest of silver, belly and thighs of bronze, legs of iron and feet of iron and feet and toes of iron mixed with clay. Now Daniel comes along and under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit he interprets the dream. It's very familiar to all of us all. He said, you, O Nebuchadnezzar, are the head of gold. Okay, so the head of gold was the Babylonian Empire. Now, God gave Daniel and gave Nebuchadnezzar visions of the great empires that would have dealing with his, Daniel's people, the Jewish people. It's very important to understand that God is revealing to Daniel the empires which will have dealings with his people. Daniel's people are the Jewish people. They are. It's not talking about the church, folks. It's talking about the Jewish people, the literal descendants of Abraham and the literal descendants of David that God has entered an unconditional covenant with. So, right? Yeah. Babylonian Empire, dealings with Daniel's people. Then came the Medo-Persian. It was 
you know, it corresponded exactly with the imagery, actually, the two arms of, and the chest, the two arms, the Medes and the Persians. Chronologically, we get it right. Then, the belly and thighs representing the Greek. And then, the legs representing Rome. And Rome split to east and west. And then, down to the final ten toes, which were the revived Roman Empire, of which we'll speak more of later. Now, still going into the book of Daniel, later, later, Daniel has a dream. Now, turn with me to the seventh chapter, because it's very important. Daniel chapter seven. This seventh chapter of Daniel has been interpreted by virtually everybody I know, as to be a reiteration of the metal man prophecy. Saying, yeah, the lion with eagle's wings, that represents Babylon, and so on and so forth. It seems right, because the lion with eagle's wings was the symbol of Babylon. However, something seemed wrong to me when I read Daniel 7, all those years ago when I was teaching the Maoris prophecy, and I believe it was an illumination of the Holy Spirit. For when I was reading it, the Holy Spirit asked me to give attention to the time scale in which Daniel was given this prophecy. And here's the time scale. In the first year of Belshazzar, king of Babylon, Daniel had a dream and visions of his head while on his bed, and he wrote it down. I saw in my vision by night, and behold, the four winds of heaven were stirring upon the great sea, and four great beasts come, came up from the sea, each different from the other. The first was like a lion and had eagle's wings. I watched till its wings were plucked off, and it was lifted up from the earth and made to stand on two feet like a man, and a man's heart was given to it. Now, the historic interpretation, taking this, you know, said, oh yes, this is talking about Babylon. It's talking about the Babylonian Empire. And it's talking about the time that Nebuchadnezzar went crazy and he was sent out into the fields and he ate like an animal and then his sanity returned to him, if you know the story. That's what they say. And then there's another beast, like a bear. It raised itself on one side, three ribs in its mouth. And they said, Arise, devour much less. The people go and say, Oh, yeah. And then that's the Medo Persian, the, the belly. And then the leopard, uh, the Alexandra kingdom, and the Greek kingdom, and so on. And then the, finally the Roman kingdom. Now, I scratch my head. Because, you know, in the first year of Belshazzar, king of Babylon, when Daniel had the dream, the Babylonian Empire was about finished. Has anybody ever read Isaiah? Has anybody ever read the prophecies? Don't you know that Belshazzar was the grandson of Nebuchadnezzar? That Nebuchadnezzar was already dead at this time? That during Belshazzar's reign, and Belshazzar was co-regent of the Babylonian Empire actually, they had their big party, remember? And the writing came on the wall, meaning, meaning, tikkun parson, you wait in the balance and it's found one. <laughs> in the reign of Belshazzar, the kingdom of Babylon died. The Medo-Persians came and took over. And yet, when Daniel's given the interpretation of this vision that he's seen, he's told, look at verse, uh, he said, these are four kingdoms which shall arise out of the earth. You read the whole of the seventh chapter. God, in other words, verse 17, when God's giving him the interpretation, he says, these four these great beasts, which are four, are four kingdoms which, which arise out of the earth. That is, their future. Ergo, this is not a reiteration of the metal man prophecy. Is that clear to you? 
are you asleep? 